Central line-associated bloodstream infection is one of the most common healthcare-associated infections in neonatal intensive care units. This infection poses a significant challenge, leading to increased morbidity, prolonged hospital stays, rising healthcare costs, and heightened mortality rates. Therefore, implementing effective strategies to reduce these infections is essential. In Saudi Arabia, current statistics indicate that the rate of neonatal central line associated bloodstream infection is 3.7 per 1,000 catheter days. This alarming figure reflects the urgent need for improved healthcare practices. The factors influencing central line associated bloodstream infection includes 1. Underlying medical conditions. Conditions such as immunodeficiency and congenital anomalies require advanced medical care, increasing infection risk. 2. Frequent vascular catheter use. The more often a catheter is inserted, the higher the chance of infection. For instance, in cases where infants require intravenous nutrition for extended periods, the risk escalates. 3. Inappropriate clinical decisions. Decisions like selecting the catheter type or insertion site can affect infection risk. For example, central venous catheters might be more suitable in some cases, but come with greater risks. 4. Non-adherence to care protocols, not following essential steps, such as proper hand hygiene, significantly increases infection risk. Central line-associated bloodstream infection. Reduction strategy. The national strategy established by the General Directorate of Infection Prevention and Control, GDIPC, aims to implement a variety of actionable interventions, such as applying bundled care protocols, utilizing care bundles that encompass all necessary steps to mitigate infection risks, including strict hygiene measures, ongoing training, providing continuous education to physicians and nurses on the latest practices and techniques in neonatal care, enhancing their ability to manage critical cases effectively. The analysis focuses on patient factors, Attributes like age and birth weight, where low-weight infants are at higher risk. Infrastructure. Issues like overcrowded NICUs can hinder individual patient care. Healthcare facilities must improve their organization to ensure adequate space. Staffing resources. Challenges such as lack of leadership and a low staff-to-patient ratio. Increasing nursing staff improves care delivery equipment and supplies, limited availability of essential antiseptics like chlorhexidine can lead to increased risks if quick access to supplies is compromised. AIM. The strategy aims to reduce the national CLABSI rate to 1.85 per 1,000 catheter days over three years, focusing on improving clinical practices within NICUs. Components of the strategy. Key components include 1. Leadership and Governance Ensuring strong leadership in NICUs to motivate teams effectively. 2. Infection Surveillance Establishing systems to monitor central line-associated bloodstream infection rates and evaluate the effectiveness of interventions. 3. Preventive Best Practices Implementing standardized protocols and bundled interventions to minimize infection risks such as hand hygiene, aseptic technique, maximal sterile barrier precautions, proper catheter, site dressing, proper replacement of administrative sets, and daily assessment of catheter insertion site and catheter need. 4. Supplies Management Ensuring the availability of essential medical equipment at all times. GDIPC believes that effective communication among all stakeholders in healthcare facilities will significantly enhance the control of central line associated bloodstream infection rates. By focusing on these strategies and practices, we can achieve substantial progress in reducing central line associated bloodstream infection rates, thereby improving neonatal healthcare outcomes and minimizing associated financial costs.